Here are some examples of problems with events that involve conservation of energy and or momentum. Such lengthy problems can be broken up into multiple time intervals, each with a beginning and an end. In addition to the usual problem solving steps, here is the strategy handling such complex problems. When reading the problem, pay attention to what physical principles are involved between each event. Break the problem into event intervals, each with its own physical principle. Pick the interval with the least number of unknowns to solve for first. The answer then can be used as input to other intervals. While checking your solution at each interval, keep in mind that you will still need to reread the problem at the end for the overall solution to the whole problem. In the first example, we will collide two balls hanging from strings. One is hanging straight down, the other one is initially pulled to the side. Notice that there are two principles in play here. Because there are changes of height and speed involved, we will need to use conservation of energy. We will read the problem for the variables involving the relevant energies. The problem also involves a collision. Hence, we will need to consider conservation of momentum. As a reminder, when reading a problem for momentum, you will need clues on mass, velocity, and directions. We will now break the problem into its time intervals. In the first time interval, mass A starts from rest and is allowed to swing freely downwards, picking up speed. In the second time interval, masses A and B collide. Note, we are already setting up the coordinate system as velocity is a vector. In the final time interval, the combined masses are swinging upward, changing speed and height. This makes it an energy problem again. In this example, the first time interval has the least number of unknowns. We will start by declaring conservation of energy. 
simplify declare the equation with variables substituting in where necessary solve for the unknown then plug in with units before reaching for the calculator. The second time interval is solved using conservation of momentum. Again, we look for simplifications as well as special case shortcuts before we solve for the unknown, then plug in. The final time interval is very similar to the first time interval as a conservation of energy problem, but this time in the other direction. Simplify, express in variables, which substitution, solve for the unknown, and plug in. As always, check that the solution makes sense. In this example, it is expected that the greater combined mass will not swing as high as the original smaller mass started with. In the second example, we have a mass pressed against a spring and an incline, which after launch will travel up the incline to collide with another mass traveling the opposite way on a flat surface. Changes in height, speed, and spring compression are involved, for which we will need to use conservation of energy. There is also a collision, so we will need to set up the conservation of momentum equation as well. We can break this problem into two time intervals. In the first interval, the spring decompresses, launching mass A. After launch, mass A gains height but loses speed until it reaches the top of the incline. While these can be thought of as two time intervals, they can be combined into a single one because conservation of energy applies throughout without interruption. During the second time interval, the masses collide, and again, remember that conservation of momentum involves vectors, so set up a coordinate system.
In this example, we will start with the second time interval. Because this is a head-on elastic collision, we can use the shortcut relative velocity equation to set up a substitution into the conservation of momentum equation. Now that we have only one unknown, we can solve for it before plugging in. However, we are going to solve for the other unknown as well because it will be used in the other event time interval. Working backwards, we are going to solve for the final unknown using conservation of energy. The steps at this point should look familiar. Check the solutions against the original problem by looking at the whole picture again. In this case, notice that the smaller mass had a greater change in velocity than the greater mass. Knowing the solutions, you can go back and practice some more by removing a different variable to serve as your unknown. 